Hi there, this is Charlie at My Messy Fingers. Welcome back. This is going to be uh, part two of putting the album together. What you're going to want to have cut are two pieces that measure their final measurement because you're going to have a 3 8 um, overlap on your seam here. You want this to measure 21 and a half inches by 10 and a quarter. So let's put this together. I'm running a using 3 8 inch tape and I'm going to run it right along the edge. I hope I'm staying in focus, folks. And again, I'm making this album for an online store called Scrap and Create. They have provided all the materials for me to make this album, and they carry everything I'm using with regards to the album build. The paper, your cardstock, your chipboard, and the chipboard, by the way, is awesome. Make sure I'm lining up the right sides here. It's good quality chipboard, folks. Um, it cuts clean and it's very sturdy. Okay, so as always, we're gonna burnish this tape. It looks like I have a little bit of an overhang. I'm not gonna worry about it because it's actually going to be folded over. Now, what's gonna be critical is we're going to line up the center of this to this seam. Um, I'm gonna pause the video for a minute. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add tape to the back side, and if you wanna do that as well, we'll give you a chance to do that. Okay, so I hope this resumed right. Um, I apologize if it didn't, but I have here the tape on the back side of my album build. Now I ran half inch tape and I ran it right on that very edge. There's a score line right there. And I ran it along that edge on both sides because I want more tape coverage here than I do the rest of this. And here I finished off with 3 8 inch tape. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to remove this center piece, and this is where I'm going to align this on this seam. So let's get this. Because it's easier to take apart one piece of tape than it is the entire piece. So line up the uh, card stock so that it's even. I'm gonna flip this over because I'm working on the base and there's a bit of an uneven edge up at the top. So make sure that that's stable. And you can see where I'm gonna put this about an inch. In fact, I wanna make sure I've got this All right, so let's take this. Oh, I took it off. Okay, paper lined up straight. This is going to line up straight. I'm going to make sure both sides of the album line up with that, and then I'm going to crease it. Turn it over. Burnish this real well. I don't need it coming coming apart while I do the rest of this. Okay, so let us get in here. I can't find my picker, so I'm using my fingernails. Now, when you're doing this, it is important that you give a gentle tug to this chipboard. Because if you don't, because you've got a quarter inch gusset, you could have this kind of fold in on itself. And then you're doing what I have to do is use undo to get it to take it apart. So. Make sure that you put a gentle, even fold, lay it down, and then crease this. Okay. 
and I kind of spoofed here. I need to get in here. Took off the wrong side. I'm going to take that apart. Bless me, bless me, bless me. Gentle tug. Is it straight? Lay it down. I got to take that apart. I apologize. I think I forgot to take um, a row of tape, a strip of tape off. I did. See right there? Okay, gentle tug, lay it down. Good thing that glue dries quickly. I tell you, undo is, <laughs> is my friend. I make plenty of mistakes. I am by far not. I just saw a mistake I made. Too late. It's a quarter, inch and a quarter here on the bottom, and I think I only have three quarters on the top, barely. It'll still work. We'll make it work because I'm not tearing it apart. I'm not wasting the paper. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around, and now I'm going to take these off. Okay, again, a nice, gentle tug. Make sure that that's on the right. Clean up the mess. Put the lid on the undo. And then burnish. Now, where the problem is going to come in at that I have... Um, a smaller piece to fold over than this piece is when I go to cut this, the corners, it's going to be off. So I am going to try and trim this down to three quarters of an inch. I hate using this Tim Holtz ruler when it comes to this. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that out loud. I get, because it's an inch and a half ruler, I get kind of confused sometimes. I'll admit it. I can't be the only one in the world. Okay, let me mark these up. up. I apologize. But if you make the same mistake, you at least know how I went about approaching it. <clears throat> All right. So now, I think I need to cut, I'm just kind of anal when it comes to this kind of stuff. I want it to all measure. out the same or as best as possible. So 
wants to slide on me. I have a new worktop. I bought one of those. Okay. I bought one of these. Uh, we are Memory Keepers glass tops. And uh, I like it. But I've noticed that things like to slide around a little bit more than I'm used to. So I... Um, but I gotta tell you, when you're using a craft knife, there's no drag. Let's get down here and fix this. I want this to be three quarters. I had a uh, different kind of a mat and all my stains, my inks, my glues, it was ugly. I could not do this in front of you people using that mat, so I got this. And so far I'm liking it. Okay, now, I got this tool long time ago at a, an event that I went to and it's a trimmer that gives you an eighth, a quarter, five eighths, and um, I think that's eight sixteenths. It's called the Perfect Trim Rule and you can, dot com. It, was, it came out in 2012, that's when I got it, so I've had it for a long time. I don't know if this is still available. But this is what I use for trimming out my corners. So I want to use the eighth. So you have these two lines here, and I'm going to line these up and trim. So now I've got this nice little piece here. And then I'm gonna scoot this around. Use whatever tool you're used to using. It's entirely up to you. I have another tool I use periodically, and it's this guy. I got it at colorwayarts.com. It's heavy, and it's already cut, so that you just line this square it right up to the chipboard, cut it, and you still have this nice piece. So whichever tool you're used to using, I kind of like this guy because he's fairly weighted. And again, I got this. It's called a two-in-one trim and miter tool. Um, and I got it at color colorwayarts.com and um, I like it. Anyways, there we go, clean up. All right, now, 3 8 inch tape. I'm gonna tape across the bottom. the bottom and then I'm going to add tape here when I get to build the uh, Fine piece on the inside. Again, it's a different style that I have, and I'll show you what I do. And okay, let's burnish. Get all the air out from that tape because that's what's going to cause any premature lifting because it dries out the tape and then you lose your hold. Okay. This is 65 pound weight, black card stock. You can get this at 
wrap and create. And I've got their links posted in the description. So let's get this off. And then I'm going to take these pieces off. I know some people use a picking tool. I do every once in a while, but sometimes I find it's faster just to use my fingernail. Okay, starting here, moving downward and toward the end is where you're going to secure that tape onto the chipboard. Okay. Now let's take this off again. I would have preferred to have a little bit bigger edge, but I messed up. We're not perfect. Okay, so again, starting in the center, downward and toward the end. It helps to pull that paper across there. Okay, downward and out. Okay, this is your first picture, your first window to see what I'm talking about in that this gusset in here is going to start to absorb some extra paper. And this won't be the first time. So you want to be able to bend your bookends and not have it bind up. So I'm scoring that really good in there. Okay, now, we're going to run the tape, and we're going to run some tape. I sure hope I got my miters right on the corners because I hate having the chipboard show. Burnish. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to pull these little tags and these corners in and flatten them down and push them in. Oh, look at that. I've got a perfect down here. I've got a little bit of it. I'll snip that. That's no big deal. Maybe I can flatten it. Okay. That works. Now let's do this in. I feel like I should have some uh, music playing in the background, but everyone's music taste is different. Okay, burnish. Hey, not too bad on the corners. That works pretty good. All right, let's burnish this in real well. And I'm coming right up to the edge to the, the chipboard because I want it to lay as flat as possible. So then when you pick it up and you fold it, you can start to see that you have a real nice crisp corner edge in there. And this is going to continue to take another layer of paper so that when this folds, it folds gently and you don't have an issue with uh, this binding up on itself because you've got so much stuffed into that gusset. Okay, so that's where I'm at. I will be back on the next one and we'll do my center spine.